unidentifiable flying object. The UFO continues to be a mystery. Wasn't alone in space. Sightings of UFOs. Something out there. Close enough to be observed. What could it be? It could only be anything. A UFO. Hey everybody! Welcome to UFO No After the Longest Fucking Break in the World. So long. <laughs> uh, me and Blind Mike, we're both here! We're back! Yeah. We're back! Wow. UFO No, long hiatus, my computer crashed, therefore all my recording shit crashed. Or, I could say they were abducted by aliens because we were tapping into some serious <laughs> you could, shit. You could say that, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> you'd be wrong, I'd be lying <laughs> for real. Yes. I mean, I watched it, and, and, and right, it just went out, and brought it to the guy, and they were yep. like, sorry, bud. It's yep. Not like, hey, it's been encoded with an alien message. No, said, but, you know. Fuck you, bro. No, fuck you. That's right. Nope, <laughs> not quite. It just crashed on me, and so I uh, finally got my... Uh, an alternative setup, so we're here to start talking about UFOs again. But uh abducted by aliens. <laughs> I mean look, man, if I had started with that, I'd been like, You you're never gonna believe it. Right. Just this tiny beam of light struck nothing but my laptop and took nothing but the hard drive and left me with something that said it doesn't work. Unrelated yeah. news, Ben. I'm going to need you to pause and leave the room. Ha, so, guys, I shined him in the eye with a flashlight and checked his laptop. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Laser pointer for the win. That's right. Yeah, very strong. You wouldn't even need that strong of a laser pointer, really. You know? Right. No. It's the ones that I that I play with cats with. That's just right. Like, wow. No, no, just distract oh. me for a quick second. and Yep, exactly. Has my laptop always been gone? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So we are going to talk about how there has been something. Now, I, I'm confused because I've seen multiple things. I've seen that this was back in 2019 that they, they've they uh, apparently researcher researchers have made contact with a parallel universe. But mm. I saw some conflicting things saying that this was a year ago, but still it was reported again. It started circulating in UFO news recently. People are sharing it now all of a sudden. If you know from, I guess it was from a year ago, but now it's like making a comeback in the news. I'm not really sure. So we're just going to talk about it because obviously we weren't around last year. So we're just going to talk about it now. But they're so they're making it out like this is a new thing. Researchers are confident to make contact with the parallel universe within days, days. So within this is days. yeah. So they, this is what they're saying. So this is from an article. Or this is an article by uh, a person named Ava Lockland, and I don't know male, female, or non-binary. I'm not. I'm just, gonna go ahead gonna go and that assume way. female. But it's Ava. Maybe, but either way, Ava Lock uh, Lockland. This is by an article by her. So we're gonna or whatever. So we're ah! gonna. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about it. So. Starts out, uh, the, we're just going to read it and comment on it, and uh, and this, this is what we're going to do. So, the Large Hadron Collider is a very complex piece of technology. It is the Atom Smasher at the CERN, C-E-R-N, center located in Geneva, Switzerland. Hmm. It's, okay. curr it's currently fired up to its maximum capacity, its highest energy levels, ever to identify or potentially generate small black holes. Really? Yes. So, Forever. all right. There's a video that you can uh, you can watch if you aren't familiar with this Large Hadron Collider. Um, Does and, the show uh, it make a black hole? Because I want that on video. Well, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I didn't really watch the video. I just read the article. But um, it's from BBC News. So all you got to do is uh, look up "Step Inside the Large Hadron Collider," and that's it. That's it. So I will be step doing right it. in. Step right into it. Uh, but anyways, like a bad idea. <laughs> as we go on, if this project is successful, it is a very new to us universe is going to be exposed. This would modify our perception of reality in a huge way. Not only the physics, but ph uh, philosophy books, too. That was horrible. I read that horribly wrong. Not only the physics, but philosophy books, too. The philosophizers. I was, yeah, I was a philosopher. <laughs> 
Uh, so it's even possible or probable that gravity from our own universe could transfer into a parallel universe. Researchers at the Large Hadron Collider say that it can. The experiment is creating more fear and doubt as alarmist critics of the LHC continue to speak up and question the legitimacy of a project such as this. Many of these people initially forewarned that the high energy particle collider would start the top of our universe with the making a part of its own. Mm. Geneva stays intact and securely outside the event horizon. Okay. See, and that's, that's what I want to know. If they're making small ones, I want to know how small is small. Like, well, are we talking on a cosmic scale? Because a small star is fucking giant. Well, let's find so, out. So I would love to know. I want diameter. Yeah. I want measurements. Uh, circumference. There's no doubt that the Large Hadron Collider, LHC, has been a big shift in research and focus. Uh, first researchers utilized this and proved the existence of the mysterious Higgs boson, also called the God Particle, which mm, turned out to be a key water. building block of the cosmos, and it's seemingly well relaying on the thanks to revealing dark matter, which was a previously untraceable theoretical prospect that's now believed to form up the foremost of matter within the universe. So this is definitely from last year because we, we definitely know dark matter exists. We now mm -hmm. know the God particle exists. So, but anyways, it, it's okay. Uh, but next week's experimentation as in last year is reflected and expected to be a game changer. Mur Fazal, that's a name. One of the physicists mm -hmm. behind this experiment shared just as many parallel sheets of paper, which are two dimensional objects, Brecht, breadth and length can exist during a dimension height parallel universes can exist in higher dimensions he says that we predict that gravity can leak into extra dimensions and if it does then miniature black holes are produced at the large hadron collider normally when people consider the multiverse they think about the many worlds interpretation of quantum physics which every possibility is actualized this cannot be tested, so it's a philosophy and not science. This is often not what we mean by parallel universes. What we mean is real universes in extra dimensions. As gravity can effuse of our universe into the additional dimensions, such a model may be tested by the detection of many black holes at the Large Hadron Collider. It says we have calculated the energy at which we expect to detect these many black holes in gravity's rainbow, a new scientific theory. I would like to know more about gravity's rainbow. Well, let's let's look at that. Let's look at what gravity's rainbow, because it sounds I colorful. Assume, and well, possibly I'm gay. sure it's more like how we look at light in a spectrum, that there would be different wavelengths of gravity. Yeah. Is what I would have to assume. Uh, Gravity's Rainbow is a 1973. That's not it. <laughs> That's a book. That's, That's weird. There's a bunch of like weird paperback or uh, uh, nonfiction books that are called Gravity's Rainbow. Hmm. Oh, Rainbow Gravity is a theory that different wavelengths of light experience different gravity levels and are separated in the same way that a prism splits white light into the rainbow. This so phenomena would be imperceptible in areas of relativity, relatively low gravity, such as Earth, but would be significant in areas of extremely high gravity, such as a black hole. As such, the theory claims to disprove that the universe has a beginning or Big Bang, as the Big Bang theory calls for all wavelengths of light. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah. So, uh, let's Give see. Give take the principle that I was thinking. Yeah, I don't. yeah, that's kind of interesting because yeah, it, it, I mean that that makes sense though. I mean, because light would bend at different gravity mm -hmm. levels, so you know, yeah, that, no different than like you see it through heat and stuff like that. Yeah. Like the... So it goes on when the collider is fired up and running, the energy is quite powerful. It's calculated in tera electron volts. A TeV is holy fuck one trillion electron volts. Oh, wow. Damn. Up to now, the Collider has sought for many black holes at energy levels below 5.3 TeV, but the foremost recent study says that is often too low. Instead, the new model forecasts that black holes may form at energy levels of no, no less than 9.5 TeV in 6 dimensions and 11.9 TeV in 10 dimensions. Mm -hmm. 
So, and by dimensions, they're just meaning the separation of these gravity wavelengths. Yeah. That's what it seems like. No different than how visually we would have to, like, if you'd entertain the principle of fourth dimension, that it would have to rotate within itself. Like, you give me a cube or whatever, and the bottom and top being equal somehow would then, the center would shrink almost like the top of a pyramid and go in and out of itself. So it still requires motion rather than a stationary visual effect. So I don't understand... Who, what 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 did you say the name was? Har Har what now? Uh, the name of the machine? No, uh, the guy that is saying this. Though. Oh, the guy that's saying this is Har uh, whatever or some shit like that. I, I think it was oh Murfazal. 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 Yeah. Uh, but the question is, is that do you think that creating these black holes with technology could be dangerous? Absolutely, it's a black hole. It's got what is a safe distance away from the event <laughs> horizon, for that matter. Yeah, just saying. Well, that's like, what they were yeah. saying. They were saying that it's it's far enough away from the event horizon. But like you said, how? I mean, if it if it's different gravity levels, I mean, obviously, gravity you can measure is literally like that, but... the most powerful thing that we have that we know of yeah. at all. Like in any form of whatever, it's the strongest known force in the universe yeah so i want to know how is it because a miniature black hole i don't know obviously i've never seen one (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but in principle if i tried to send a car through a black hole and stay at a safe distance i would continue to see visual images of this car long after it had already been ripped apart by the gravity just based on how much faster that level of gravity would make something move than how fast light moves. That's so a lot of math. Before, well, yeah, it's it's just I'd be sitting there looking at a stationary picture of it long after it's gone, and then it would just, like, shrink. It yeah. would look like it would shrink and go through the black hole, like you'd be thinking when you entertain, like, a cartoon. They go through the black hole, they kind of shrink, and then they just reappear somewhere else. Well, that's the idea of a star. We're looking at the remaining image of a star possibly long after it's already gone well it depends on how far away it is yeah true (laughs) yeah but because that's that's the whole light year principle how fast light travels in a julian year but yeah so it's i mean and if that's based on a large scale because of the magnification of gravity if it's based on the size of the black hole i just assume that would increase the radius at which it could pull things into it but having a small one, a miniature one, how would you have a safe distance from that level of gravity? I mean, I can't even, that's what astronauts train for is just to be able to experience that level of gravity for a couple of seconds and be fine. Yeah. It's trained for a long time for that. If I mean, think about the levels of gravity that are in the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. That is why we can't survive is that crushing pressure that's why we haven't seen the bottom that's a good point it's so if you're experimenting with this in localized area and it's not ripping whatever facility apart that's around it because to the best of my knowledge we don't have anything that can survive that level of gravity yeah like no material can withstand withstand that much crushing force the potential for disaster is astronomical yeah, just imagine that it made one that was too large. And exactly, that's what I was thinking. Would continue to suck in because yeah. that would when you'd see the planet implode. Yeah, well, and how? Yeah, how would you be able to contain it? I mean, yeah, they create many black holes, but how do you? I mean, I suppose the amount of energy you put in is about the amount of energy that's put out. Perhaps, maybe, yeah. If they're talking like miniature, as in you can find things that behave similar to what we believe black holes do because there's still been arguments amongst the scientific community whether black holes even exist yeah let alone now we can artificially make one bullshit (laughs) okay yeah not to mention aren't we in a pretty bad energy crisis like that's what's going on in the planet no kidding yeah so you have the amount of energy amount of force to just go ahead and attempt (laughs) to make yeah contact with some theoretical plane of existence 
which you don't have another man on the other side to be like, yeah, know where I go, walkie talkie style. Like you don't fucking know what you you for all we know there is another dimension. We've sent millions of items there, like uh, that lost in fucking. Well, what is that one with Will Ferrell and uh, uh, the what? Danny McBride, the movie with Will Ferrell and Danny oh. McBride, the old one where they like they just see all the like shit from like nowadays New York, just back with dinosaurs and oh, uh, rubber suit aliens, Journey to lost, the or lost in, lost the Lost World or lost Land in, of the Lost. The lost World, yeah, one of those two, yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah, okay, that's what, same principle, how, yeah. boom, there'd just be, like, a fucking quickie mart in the middle of a desert there or some <laughs> shit. Like, for all we know, we've been doing that left and right, and nobody's there to be like, hey, so shit is coming from your house to my house, so, um, it's weird. <laughs> and so, for all we know, we've been doing it this whole time. How are you guys saying, oh, we can do this within days, which, by the way, this was March, of a couple of years ago? Well, I think it was last shit year. About it. I think it was last okay. year. Yeah. Either way, we said a couple of days in that article, and here we are a year later. I mean, look. It's been a couple of days. What's your, where, where's your guys, uh, did you guys just shut up because it didn't work? Here's or... my theory. Here's my theory. All, because this came out last year, all of this shit that's going on this year is blamed on a black hole created by these guys. Okay, well. A parallel universe that's gone to shit. And maybe maybe it maybe it merged a really shitty universe with ours that wasn't as shitty. Mm. I don't know. E- needless to say, there is still a lot that needs to be done to to figure out, and there's a lot of room for error in this, regardless of uh, how how smart oh, yeah. these guys Absolute think they are. Massive destruction. Yeah. So because we're talking if black holes are as powerful, and all it takes is we think we know what we're talking about, and. Even if you're off on just a couple numbers, which this was all theoretical science until allegedly now. Yeah, yeah. So, all in theory, uh, I mean, you can think something's not going to burn and then put a match to it. And, oh, shit, look at that. Yeah. And fucking, you don't know until you do it. So, if this thing is much more powerful or exponentially increases in the amount of gravity that's formed just because black holes are known to be as unstable as they are. Yeah. They just swallow everything around them. You're telling me you can open and close one at will. It's uh what there's quite the military advantage weapon there, wouldn't you yeah, say? No shit. No shit. Okay, we can foil launch enough energy into this thing to open a black hole up in the center of whatever, I don't know, name enemy countries fucking <laughs> poison of operation for Cossack 35 stand. seconds. Yeah. yeah. 35 seconds and then it'll dissipate because we've only put that much energy. Poosh, they're gone. They're now in hanging out with Will Ferrell and Danny McBride. <laughs> so, exactly. And then boom, done. And that's all it takes. You're telling me we're not going to do that. The Swiss now run the world. If that's the way that it goes. Yeah. Which, so wouldn't that be some shit? The, 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 so for now, we're just waiting for the world to end based on the fact that we know that these scientists are playing with something that they could not possibly control. Uh, so that's I, fun. I'm pretty sure you'll know about it a little while, like not very long, but shortly before shit goes down. Not that there'd be anywhere to hide. Yeah. Well, there's uh, a lot well. of there's a lot of stuff coming out. So that that leads us to our next one, which is. Uh, the Pentagon saying that it has off-world vehicles that are not, quote, made of this earth. Okay, what does that mean? Yeah, exactly. So this is uh, an article that was uh, put out by a gentleman named Elijah Walker. Once again, I'm assuming this gentleman is a gentleman, uh, but this was back in... Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pretend that he's Christopher... No, he's that... What's that one? Paul Walker. I'm going to pretend that he's the <laughs> imaginary son of that guy that died... Oh, yeah. No, there you go. He went from fast cars to writing now. about UFOs. You're right. Nope. That's... Well, his tragic accident that yeah. his father was in led him to a life of science and to better understand gravity so that way he could make safer vehicles. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. That's good. That's good. <laughs> All right, so Elijah writes uh, that in March, astrophysicist Eric W. Davis gave a classified briefing to the United States Defense Department on a discovery that, if disclosed 
in virtually any other time would be front row center in the news cycle of every major newspaper, TV broadcast, and radio broadcast across, across the country, if not the world. Instead, Planet, yeah. Yeah. it has been mostly cast aside as an afterthought in a time of coronavirus hysteria. Uh, the briefing focused on what Davis called off-world vehicles not made on this earth. In other words, Davis, who spent years working as a consultant for the Pentagon UFO program and now works as a defense contractor, has officially spilled the beans. Spaceships, a.k.a. UFOs, are real, and it's something we have most likely known about for a very long time. And I'm going to end that with a duh. I mean, come also on. was most likely. That leads me to believe you don't know what you're talking about. Nah, maybe. Maybe. That's what I mean. I heard a lot of ifs and stuff in that <laughs> last <laughs> last deal about black holes as well. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, everybody's like, follow the science. Okay, well, why do we keep changing it all the time then? Well, it says Davis's bombshell quote came in the latest UFO report from the New York Times, which has owned the beat for the past several years, according to report from NewYorkMag.com, in December 2017, a paper reported on the existence of the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, or ATIP, an effort by the <laughs> Pentagon to investigate UFOs that was supposedly ended in 2012. Hailed as a historical a inflection point. That. Yeah. Hailed as a historical inflection point in our attitudes regarding ufos it implied the same message as the most recent one that is to say that ufos are in fact real and they are not from this earth as many skeptics have claimed according to a new report from the times while the program was renamed to move to a different part of the pentagon the effort remains the same it is now moving up to a whole new era of transparency according to louise elizondo the ex-director of its Whoa. predecessor program it's no longer Sorry. it no longer has a hide in the shadows, he said. Known as the unified or unidentified aerial phenomenon task force, it is now obligated mm -hmm. to make further reports public. But will the task force ever present physical proof? While the announcement is still being digested by most people, the time is now the time is now to buckle up for round two. Further announcements and reports are expected to be released in the coming weeks, months, and years as more and more findings are made public. The big question is whether or not physical evidence will be presented in the form of an actual craft or perhaps even artifacts or instruments from other worlds, spaceships, and even alien beings themselves. And we've you talked about... one of these craft. You <laughs> showed me... I want to go to a USO show, and I want to see one of these craft going. <laughs> I will well, you... That's what it's going to take for me. If you look at a lot of the supposed crafts that are caught now, they really have a very similar, you know, most of them are are fairly uh, similar in design. I'm, yeah. What I'm saying is if you're going to admit to some shit, show me the goddamn proof. Well, I mean, that's the thing. Okay. If I, if I, you, you've been accusing me of coming into your house and stealing <laughs> cookies out of your cookie jar. For 25 years. Yeah. And then I'm like, nope, 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 nope. And then I'm like, you're right. I have been stealing cookies. <laughs> After the I whole moved time. to the other side of the country, and they're still coming up missing, I'm like, no, it was definitely me. And you're going to be like, show me a picture. Show me a video. <laughs> that's right. No, that's you're, true. You're going to need that. Because how are you doing that? You live in New York now. Yeah. I, I fly in every weekend and I steal cookies. <laughs> Me and the cookie monster. We get together with that little the hamburglar from fucking wherever that was. <laughs> hamburglar. We just go looting food. Looting cookies. Cookies and cheeseburgers. Well, that that is a far departure from UFOs. So yep. it goes on to say, Elizondo, who took over the lead position of the Defense Department's UFO program in 2010 is among a small group of former government officials and scientists with security clearances who, without presenting physical proof, say they are convinced that objects of undetermined origin have crashed on Earth with materials retrieved for study. The program was started about a decade ago and budgeted at $22 million, according to the Times. It went by ATIP for Advanced Aviation Threat Identification <laughs> Program. get over ATIP. I know. <laughs> I'll be like, oh, the government's... They might as well call Focusing it dick tip. The All they would have had to be is defense, <laughs> uh, identification, correlation, 
you know, threat <laughs> identification <laughs> program. There you go, dick tip. There, I mean, come on, come on. We deserve a dick tip at this point. <laughs> Defense edition of Combat Kinetics. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So it says its original purpose was to investigate flying foreign weapon threats, both ones being utilized and developed now or ones that could be developed within the next 40 years. Within this process, there is a distinct chance that it may have stumbled upon the most significant UFO-related discovery in modern American history. Former Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid has also weighed in, saying he believed crashes of objects of unknown origin have occurred and that any materials that have been recovered should be studied. Davis, who has previously created a report urging the federal government to research time travel through wormholes, Jesus, through wormholes, said he has studied the documents intensively. He came to a sobering conclusion, according to the report by New York Magazine, we couldn't make the alleged otherworldly alien spaceships ourselves. So, basically, they're saying... We don't want to show you anything. We just want to tell you that we have it. Yeah, that's why I said I'm going to need some proof. Yeah, I mean, you I'm know, once again, we're still in the dance. same boat as we were before. Demonstration. We're still in the same. See. Just because, I mean, here, here's the, in my opinion, the most solid, uh, solidifying evidence that we've gotten recently is the uh, videos that were released uh, where uh, that's called the gimbal. And the TikTok, or the Tic Tac, not TikTok, Jesus fuck. I was like, I'm um, sorry, there's UFO shit on TikTok? <laughs> yeah, the Tic Tac UFO and the gimbal that was verified by, um, I can't remember the guy's name, um, the commander guy, but uh, anyways, those, the, to me, those are the biggest thing. I mean, the, this, this, you know, it's been, it's been verified by numerous, uh, you know, pilots by numerous military staff but once again it's still not really conclusive evidence it's it's it looks like something that couldn't be ours it moves like something that couldn't be ours but still we don't have anything in hand we, we don't, don't we don't have anything all that... the information to the public of the shit we can do yeah so i don't necessarily believe you when you tell me no that shit we can't do yeah how do i fucking know i don't even know what we can do i'm gonna assume i just assume it's I'll all find out in 30 years the shit we were doing 20 years ago to me it's it's too ridiculous to think i mean i guess it's just too out there to think that we have beings that are you know, can travel the entire universe, and they just they they continue to to come here. You know, and we're like whatever, we're like the whatever. trailer okay. park say, in Alabama of I'm the just universe. I'm saying, for all you know, fucking sand is like a universal commodity. Okay, you don't have any idea as far as what they have found as a useful research. I mean, people can make an engine run on water. But, you know, there's no saying that anybody else is using that. They could use whatever's common or uh, close to them for their materials. So if it turns out they had some sand on their planet, it was a precious resource, not unlike how we're running out of fossil fuels and shit. Yeah. Maybe that was their sand and they found a way to make these high powered engines run on sand. So they keep coming here because we got fucking buttloads of it. My question, though, is this is. You know, this has always been a very common assumption that there somehow something is wrong with their planet or wrong with their race, and that's why they got to come to Earth because we have something that they don't have. But that's to me, that's assuming a lot. That's assuming that they well, a been around for a long time. Physiologically, that everything else is uh, like okay, all these planets are dying and blah blah blah. Our planet's fucking dying. Why would they keep coming here? We're exactly. On our own, well, and, all, and of all the millions of and billions of options that you have, I mean, here's the deal: if you well, can travel, if you can interstellar travel, then why why are you limiting yourself to one planet? Or is it that I they've would... already explored most of the other universe, and that mm -hmm. once again there is something here that is not elsewhere? Mm -hmm. Which I don't know. It's easily possible. But the other uh, thing for me is you'd think if you were looking for some place to set up home because something's wrong with their world, I'm sure it's not, oh, we need, like I said, sand to fix it. But uh, 
whatever they keep coming here for, if they're in trouble, wouldn't they be coming to find a uh, an alternative refuge like how we've looked outward and be like okay this planet's moon looks like it's something that we could inhabit it's very similar to earth very well blah, blah 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 but and yet in all the occasions we're hearing all of these alleged alien races that come here are not capable of breathing our op- oxygen yeah and all those counts so the, why would they continue to come here for that reason. Well, we just don't know that. We don't know that they can't breathe their oxygen. We don't know that they haven't been here the whole time. We don't know that they've never visited us before or or if they have. Exactly. We don't know any of that. So all of it's speculative. And until we have evidence, they're really it really is just that. It's speculating as to what could be, what what might not be, what do they have, what are they capable of. Exactly. When it could very easily be, be honest and just put dicks on the table. It could very <laughs> easily not. just be our own government, our own world that are testing shit based on something that we found a long time ago. I mean, Honestly, it, it could be most, ancient most technology that we stumbled on. To me, is that say something did hit the planet, you know, some larger meteor. I mean, we realize they're mostly space dust, rocks, and fucking metals. You know, some super precious metal came down. We decided to research it already in the past. Maybe for all we know, that's what Roswell was, and then everybody just took over with these alien fucking things. You know, this is just, okay, it wasn't a UFO, it wasn't this, it was just a precious metal that fell in on a meteor, right? So we nabbed it up, researched it, found out the principles of this metal, used it for these crafts and just let the story perpetuate itself through rumor yeah. Yeah. over the years while they continue to do their thing and now they're looking for a way to use it and the bulk of the world is yelling aliens 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 you know we believe we can't be the only blah 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 and this and that and this which i absolutely don't believe we're the only thing out there i just don't think that it's like i've proposed before i just feel like it's the same general life altered by environment yeah. I think something like if we're going to call it the Big Bang or whatever, if something similar to that happened and it spread the same shit all over the universe based on the different atmospheres, different planets, different chemicals within its rays and life finds a way. Yeah. It always just finds one a way, big so galactic just, experiment. Mm-hmm, and then anything that we've left floating around our atmosphere here from our explorations to space, a meteor comes by fucking nabs part of a 1972 satellite flings that off on some other planet all our general you know skin cells things that would have gotten on it that went into this hypernative state in space would then go and base on if they could survive in this planet then they would have yeah so for that's in honest, all honesty is if there are aliens that's how i think that shit started i don't know when it started i don't know how long ago but I feel like it's just the same stuff spread everywhere. I don't think we're the first. I don't think we, I still think it's that huge ego to think that we started all of it. Like there's that whole panspermia thing. Like we're just spreading life throughout the galaxy. Honestly, if every individual species that have ever come about on any planet decided to shoot just their plants out into space in all directions, can you imagine the way the universe would be? Yeah. Just how many different planets were terraformed, how many different sets of life, and you know, something that's a carbon, a fully carbon based or helium based planet that somehow found and formed life shoots a plant to our thing, and then both our oxygen and their helium plant are able to coexist. Can you imagine what that atmosphere would be like? Yeah. Well, and imagine, imagine the millions of years of evolution after that. Exactly. So, th- so this being the current result of what that uh, took place millions of years ago. Exactly. So, for all we know, when you look at Saturn's moons or whatever, and they're oh, there's like thirteen of them, and blah blah, and they're all flying around, and nine of them are desolate as shit, but these two look kind of like Earth. So, uh, maybe somebody shot some stuff up there a long ass time ago, or even if it is like volcanoes something big things like that something that shot stuff so high in the atmosphere or whatever or just the shit that got carried around with us when we were going out whether it be past present because we've entertained the idea of ancient astronauts and stuff having other technologies or whatever there's it it could easily have just all been spread around in that manner numerous possibilities and 
We're just getting further to the truth because I believe we're in a disclosure event, and that's why a lot of these things are transpiring, because they have a plan, and it involves space, and they need us to know certain things in order to do it without they reservation. They certain things. Yep. That's all. Yep. Uh, like I, In all honesty, like I said, I think that we found that metal used, maybe called it Roswell. They got that stuff. We want, we need more funding where they yeah. burned through a lot and all in theory. And we've done this, but now we want the people on board to be backing us so we can publicly do this or whatever, uh, without it being an issue. We need recruits, we need manpower, whatever the case may be. And then, so we've had this stuff. That's why they're not providing proof, but it also could be when you're talking about blue book left and right or not blue book, uh, blue, blue beam, beam. Yeah. the holographic stuff. That's why I say I'm going to need some sort of proof. Yeah. I'm going to need a physical show because for all we know, all of these videos that have been looked at by all these, uh, whatever, I, could you not videotape a holographic projection sort of thing? Do that and be like, okay, no, that's real. Yeah, well, just project a shadow and then project the same thing. Just do the whole deal. Yeah. If we can do it with movies, why can't you do it like that? And they have much higher technology than we do on the average civilian basis. So if they did that sort of stuff and just now they're like, Oh yeah, no, these things are, we can't show you, but just believe us. They're real. <laughs> yeah. It's, I no, you've been lying for the past 70 years. Why you're being like, okay, well we we've, we've had it for a while. We do have them. You guys were right. Ha ha. We're, we're not going to show you, but just take comfort in that. No. <laughs> okay. Once a liar, always a liar. That's right. And so with that, not gonna we're going to wrap this up. So keep your eyes to the skies. And like Mike said, you know, it could be that uh, the galaxy was spreading its sperm around all the planets. <laughs> yeah. And who knows what happened is like little sperms running around the universe trying to impregnate planets. And a, a few of them got through. Who knows? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> who, knows? <laughs> who, knows? Yeah. who knows? Yeah. But hey, we're going to keep this up. We're going to try and bring more content, and this is what we're trying to do. So, hey, thanks for listening, UFO No. I'm Ben. This is Mike. I'm Blind Mike. Blind Mike! But he sees all. <laughs> Peace out, y'all. <laughs>